I wrote a pattern that uses a reversible centered 5 into 1 decrease. So this is a reversible quadruple decrease, and I thought you might want to see how I did that. A 5 into 1 decrease means you have 5 stitches and you turn them into 1. If you're doing it reversibly, that means you have 5 pairs of stitches, or 10 stitches total involved in the maneuver. Notice you need to pause your knitting two pairs away from your central spine pair. So you pause your knitting way over here. I get a couple of double pointed needles or cable needles and I will park my stitches. Knits go on one needle and purls go on the other needle. And you may notice I'm slipping some stitches in a slightly strange way. I usually work my reversible lace using the combination knitting method, which means half my stitches face in one direction and half face in the other direction. So if you see strange stitch facings in my work, don't let that confuse you. Now I have slipped all of these so they're all facing left or west so as not to be strange. Okay, so there's our five stitches for our obverse decrease. If I number them, I will call them one, two, three, four, and five. And I want to create a stack where this one is on the top of the stack. The sort of easy way to do this is to use a crochet hook. And I can put the crochet hook through each stitch in the order I want from the top to the bottom of the stack. The order I want is 3, 2, 4, 1, and 5. So that's what I will do. The crochet hook goes through the stitches, 3, and 2. Now I want 4. How am I going to get 4? Well, I can get to stitch number four, if I park stitch number one for a, just a moment and slide stitches two and three off the needle, now I can get to stitch number four and then I can get stitch number one and finally I can get stitch 5. And once I have stitch 5, I can put that needle away. That goes away. Let's find the yarn. Bring that up. Wrap the yarn as you would for making a knit stitch. And then gently and carefully Pull the yarn through the five stitches that are on the needle. And you notice how I sort of have to wiggle the hook back and forth because some of those stitches are leaning in hard from the left and some are leaning in hard from the right. I'm going to tug on my new stitch to figure out which leg goes back to the skein, and then that helps me give it the correct stitch facing as I place it on the needle. So that was the obverse decrease. Let's do the reverse decrease. I turn the work, and yes, I know this is not the most efficient way of working this maneuver. However, I am, in this case, I am less worried about speed and more worried about getting it right on the first try. I'm going to do the same maneuver, 3, 2, 4, 1, and 5. I already know 
that I need to park number one, so I'll park it before I even start. So three, two, four, one, and five. And once again, as soon as I get five, the needle goes away. Find the yarn, and once again you want to gently and carefully pull the yarn through all the stitches. And the crochet hook can go away. And once again, I figure out which leg is the leg that goes back to the skein and then I can use that to help me place the stitch up on the needle. Now most of you are going to want to give it this stitch facing because you're doing western knitting. I'm doing combination knitting so I will use this stitch facing instead. And I'll turn the work back. The maneuver is completed and now I can continue working across my knitting in pattern. So there you go. A reversible, centered, quadruple decrease. Not fast, but it can be done.